adventure, sports, outdoors. With host, Harry Canterbury. There I was, back in the wild again And I fell right at home, where I belong I had that feeling, coming over me again Just like it happened so many times before Hi, this is Harry Canterbury for Adventure Sports Outdoors, and today we go south of the border, all the way down to one of the, if not the best bass fishing lakes in the whole world, Lake Mateos, about 35 miles north, northeast of Culiacan, Mexico. Culiacan is located almost due east of the lower third of the Baja Peninsula, about 150 miles northwest of Mazatlan just off the western coast of Mexico. My wife Kathy and I journeyed down there for the very first time in February of this year and it had a spectacular week of fishing, dining, and sightseeing. What a trip! And so today we bring you the highlights of a week spent in fishing paradise. Literally some of the best bass fishing in the entire world. Our host J.C. Galloway of Lake Mateos Bass Lodge provided us with bass fishing experience of a lifetime. So off we go to beautiful Lake Mateos, near the magnificent Sierra Madre Mountains in Mexico. Hola y bienvenido a Mexico. Adventure Sports Outdoors brought to you in part by Wildlife Prairie State Park, Peoria, Illinois, a 2,000 acre park with over 150 animals. The Embassy Suites Hotel, located on the Illinois side of downtown Peoria. Watkins Marine, home of Tracker Boats and Mercury Outboards in Pekin, Illinois. Gallagher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's Riverfront, open at 11 a.m. daily. And Tremont Oil Company, for all types of vehicle maintenance in Tremont, Illinois. Our thanks to these sponsors. Our trip began when Colby Sims of Sims Outdoors invited us to go to Lake Mateos Bass Lodge outside Culiacan, Mexico. He invited Kathy and me to come down for a week of sport fishing on this lake with a serious reputation for catching largemouth bass of enormous sizes. We couldn't resist, so we packed up and headed on down below the border. The trip down was uneventful, and we landed in Culiacan, where we were met by a staff member from the hotel who drove us about 35 miles north, northeast of the lodge located on the lake. We were joined on this trip by good friends, Colby Sims and his dad, Ray, both great fishermen in their own rights and big aficionados with bass fishing in Mexico. Colby has been south of the border, but this was Ray's first trip down. Now, what I'm about to tell you is not another fish story because the proof is right in front of you, but the fish ranged in weight from about three pounds to 10 pounds or better, and we caught a ton every day, literally every outing. There was no bad fishing. It was all good. Try to find a lake like this in the United States and it is impossible. Slightly deeper trees out here and uh, throwing the spinner baits up in them. And uh, I actually just cast it, just passed uh, a couple little stick ups and just started to pull it through and hit them on the other side of the stick ups. I set the hook and, and had to wrestle them through the uh, through the wood cover, you know, into open water. But uh, put up uh, good fight. Good little tussle. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Beautiful. Got a nice one on here, Harry. Yes, you do. <laughs> oh boy. If you want to see vistas, this is where you go. From the moment we arrived to our first trip out on the lake, we were treated like royalty. J.C. Galloway has it all. A great chef, super fishing guides who really know this lake, and a lodge that pampers you beyond belief. And to top it off, J.C. personally went out to fish with us. After all, why wouldn't he? He loves bass fishing. How close are they spawning? A couple weeks? Probably about three weeks. About three weeks, two or three weeks. 
we, we spawn here for a long spawn, so we're gonna start. You know, we've caught we've caught 50 like that. Uh, we're trying to get the big ones. We've caught at least 50 in that class. We just we're trying to get the film. We've only got so many minutes on the show. But that that there, we've caught just oodles of them, haven't we, uh, JC? We have. We, between four and six pounds, we've caught a lot of fish. Yeah. I'll show you a way to release. Him. Take a bass like this and put him like that. He's paralyzed. Uh huh. And you can take him, put him in the water. You don't have to worry about him jumping around on your hand or anything. Away he goes. There he goes. Well, I'm going to put the camera down and we're going to start fishing for some more and hopefully we can hook into another big one like we did this morning. Already got one. <laughs> you know, this is one of the few places in the world you can go and actually expect to get a hit every cast. Every cast. And if you don't expect it, you're going to miss it. That's right. Ray said that. He says, every time I cast, I expect to get a hit. That's right. Okay, hold on. <laughs> What'd you say there? I think you need to get rid of the camera and get the net. <laughs> oh, it's a good fish. Good yeah, fish. Yeah, I barely got him hooked, too. Okay, I'm going to get the net. All right. Hey, am I... <laughs> I can walk and chew gum. You can walk and chew gum. Look at that. Cameraman that can use a net. <laughs> How often do you find that? Not very often. Good fish, Jason. Nice fish. See, I told you to throw to the left side of the yeah, boat. Yeah, that's how you could get to the Then left. I threw the right side of the boat. <laughs> nice another, another good fish. That's the vertical release. Yeah. <laughs> Perfectly parallel. Yeah. All the trees down there. Bring him up, let's take a look at him. Got him the boat, there he is. There he is. Yep, another one in the drink. What's the water temperature just about right now? What do you think? Uh, about 72 would be my guess. 72? Along the way, we noticed some local fishermen tending small one-man net rigs. These guys are fishing for the local favorite, tilapia, a fish that's gained considerable flavor in our area. In the past 10 years, the tilapia has gone from exotic to everyday fish in the local supermarket, and the world feeds on it. Quite a job, huh? That's quite a job. Fishing is hard work. You tell my wife, fishing is hard work. <laughs> <laughs> I got to convince her of that. Hey, we're fishing up. Uh over a flooded cemetery here. When the lake was flooded, there was several villages in here. There was also several cemeteries. When the lake was built, there were many small villages around the canyon. And unfortunately, that's what happens when you build a big dam in a big lake. Many benefit from the dollars that the lake brings in and the power it produces, but some are forced to relocate. Here you see an old cemetery where they have built crosses that rise up out of the lake to denote a local cemetery. It's a strange feeling when you fish around these crosses and start catching these wonderful bass. Don't know why, but the fishing was just as good here as anywhere else. You ever fished in the cemetery before here? That's the first time for me. Yeah. Not something you do every day of the week. And every so often you see a little now chapel here, alongside the lake atop a small uh, knob lake. overlooking the lake. The Very lake. serene. Oh, I'm okay. I, I got... I got a good okay. Yeah. Okay. I have walked up there several times. Well, twice when the water was down. It's a little Not chapel, huh? Down. It's a little chapel. Yep. It was built where the uh, young man was killed by a donkey, and that chapel was built as a memorial to him. Long time ago, I'm sure. Long time ago, back when the villages was here. Your casinto. Casinto. Thing. 
Well, wow. Here's Consinto Flores. Consinto Flores. And we've got that nice, nice bass here. It's getting late, but I'll tell you what. We missed our boat messed up, so we had to get in another boat, but we got a great guide. Another nice bass. Really just a beauty. On a buzz bait. Hang on. Caught that one on a buzz bait. That's a nice fish. That's wow. a good fish. I'm gonna say he's right in the four pound range. Could be bigger. Got a nice girth, nice and fat. Really a nice fish. Really a beautiful, beautiful fish. Got a great guide. You know, it takes a good guide to get these fish. We've caught about four of these this evening, and uh, we only got the fish the last two hours. But I'm gonna tell you what, folks. That's what Lake Mateos is all about. It's catching these nice bass and a lot of them. We've caught hundreds of them. We're going to let him go now. No, I want to take a picture. Oh, you want to get a photo? Okay, well, let's get a regular picture. Aztec Fishing Lakes. That's right, Aztec Fishing Lakes. Get the camera out and let's uh, get one for the magazine. <laughs> we had some oh, fantastic good. meals at the lodge. Enjoy. Gracias. <laughs> Gracias looks great. That sure does. Always great meals here. Delicious food. Delicious. There's our photographer. <laughs> we got the pro here, <laughs> pro. and the pro's kid. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, he's whooping. Uh, well, he was whooping us all today until uh, until you go and, and latch on to your giant. Yeah, I got a you got a big one. So now you guys are in the running for a, you guys will be competing this afternoon. <laughs> Oh, don't get me in this competing stuff. I don't want to be. <laughs> he says I'm very, very competitive. I don't really see it that way, but. Uh, it's just a lot of fun, I'll tell you. It's great. And check out this view from our veranda where we took our meals. Hey, I'm here with Tim Post, his first trip to Mexico ever. And uh, tell us about this trip. Uh, it's been tremendous fishing, especially the last couple of days. Uh, the first morning I got uh, my personal best uh, at that point. Uh, is there a spook first thing in the morning, about seven and a half pounds. Uh, then uh, just before we came in for lunch today, we were catching tons of fish all morning. Um, I'm fishing in 92 feet of water, throwing a swim bait along a ledge and uh, caught a fish that uh, was about 11 pounds. Oh my goodness. <laughs> People fish all their life and never get anything like that. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> and you're from, he's from New York City. And we got Mike. Mike, you're from LA. That's right. And uh, it's been a great experience. It has been. Uh, we've been catching quality fish here, uh, good numbers and uh, in good sizes. All right. And, and a great place to uh, relax and then enjoy yourself. Absolutely. Hi folks, my name's Colby. I got a fishing tip for you here this week and uh, a lot of people like to fish spinner baits. They're great lures for big fish. We catch a lot of really big bass and muskies and all kinds of species on these things. But uh, one thing that's going to put a lot more fish in the boat for you is the addition of a trailer hook. Uh, you put an extra hook on the back of there and it's going to grab those short striking fish that come up and miss the bait a lot. And so we uh, we catch probably an extra, you know, 25% of our fish or so we get on that trailer hook there. So um, Colby Sims, that's your fishing tip of the week. Good luck. JC, we got some burls out here. Who do they belong to? The burls? Yeah. Harry, they don't belong to anybody in, until you hit one. <laughs> <laughs> there was plenty of action right from the get-go. Kobe was catching fish, JC was catching fish, and so was I. In fact, there were a number of occasions when we were conducting interviews when the fish decided to intervene and steal our attention. That's just the kind of fishing you can expect here at Lake Mateos. And that's not staged, folks. That's 100% authentic. Hi, this is Harry Canterbury with another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. We're at Lake Mateos, Mexico at Lake Mateos Bass Lodge. Our host is J.C. Galloway, and uh, he's quite a fisherman, been down here quite a while, and we're just having a ball. And uh, JC, it's all about fishing for bass here, isn't it? It's all about fishing for bass. This is a, not a tourist retreat. This is a fishing camp. This is a fishing Weird. camp. Oh, wait a minute, there's one! <laughs> hey, buddy, you got one on. <laughs> look at there. Hey, this is a, it's like this all the time. Is it a good one? Well, it's it stripping feels like line. a good one. It's stripping line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Check it out. What's coming up here now? Whoa. That is a good fish. Good recording, RC. Now. 
Uh, hey, you got loose. him. Yeah, got he him. come loose. I got, got him. You hung up. I got him. <laughs> Look at that. Got hung in that limb, oh, but we my got him. Goodness. Here, I'll let ah. go. Hey, there's a fine specimen of Lake Mateo's fish. Absolutely. That's about a four pounder. And uh, hey, we can stretch the truth. Might be four and a half. But hey, this is great fishing. Stay tuned for a great show. Hey. I'll tell you. Just watch the look at that little screen. Oh, there he goes. Hank, he got away. He got away. Hey, I want to tell you <laughs> what, folks. I'm a fisherman. Fishermen can tell stories. And I got a witness right here, JC. That fish was pushing six pounds. Nice bass. Always a nice bass. That's nice bass. Good bass. But we're going to get some more. There you go. <laughs> All right. Nice. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fish. I'll get it. <laughs> good job. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Get a good lip lock on him. Beautiful fish. Beautiful. We'll go around the other side of the boat and you can get released from the sun and we'll get a better picture. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Pretty fish, isn't it? Okay. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah. Such confidence in my cameraman. He reaches for the camera yeah. when I make the cast. And you said, don't I'm do gonna it. going to catch that fish. <laughs> reaches for the camera. Fires it up before I even set the hook. You kind of figured the pattern out. I'll tell everybody what we figured out here. Well, what we figured out here is... I missed another fish here. <laughs> what we figured out here is that uh, the fish are hanging out on the points with brush on them. So what we've been doing is just simply going point to point. When we started doing that, our number of catches doubled. In fact, we've, we've lost quite a few fish and caught quite a few fish here in the last 30 minutes. But they're on the points. So that's the pattern we're working. Got a good one. Look at him. Oh, it's a good fish. Good fish. Oh, man, is he a nice one. Oh, good fish. Good fish. I wore him out. Look at that. <laughs> Turn around here and let's take a look at him. That's what, about the six fish? And yeah, in about 20 minutes. About 20, 30 minutes? Yeah, look at that. Nice. That's a nice bass. That is a beautiful bass. It is. Look at that. Now, what do you think? We're not weighing these, so what do you think? Uh, where is he at? He's less than a million. <laughs> <laughs> That's good four and a half pound fish. Yeah, good fish. Yeah. Of course. For TV purposes, it's seven. Seven, yeah. It's actually about <laughs> Okay. Watch the camera. Get him in the boat. Oh, man. Is he a nice fish? All right. Nice six pounder. Yeah, that's potatoes. a good fish. Yes, it was. We're going to catch some bigger ones right around the corner. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's the thing here at Lake Mateus. You never know what you're going to get, whether it's going to be 12 inches or 12 pounds. Yeah, I know it. It's a surprise. Always a surprise. All right, we got one here, Harry. We got another one. Got another one. That's the third fish in 10 minutes. Oh, he looks good. Uh -huh. Oh, nice good fish. fish. Look at that. Oh, boy. That's a nice bass. He is a dandy. Ah. Not as big as the last one, but no, close enough. Not quite, but hey, he's a nice fish. Yes, he is. Good fish. Man, I got him hooked, too. <laughs> nice fish. Nice fish. You can see how he's paralyzed. He just paralyzed when you lay him on his side. There he goes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Boy, they just. Man, these fish fight hard. Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, yeah, fish, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful fish. Comes right up out of these trees, fishing in between these points where it drops off into deeper water, they're coming up and, and clobbering these spinner baits in this clear water, going with these real natural colored baits with these translucent skirts. Ooh, man, he's hooked good. He had, he had the main hook and the trailer hook in him solid. 
Get those pliers. There he is. Hey, you got one on there, JC. I got JC. a good one on here. I got a good one, Harry. Got a good one. Look at him. Oh, it's a good fish. Good fish. Oh, man, is he a nice one. Oh, good fish. Good fish. I wore him out. Look at that. Ah! <laughs> Turn around here and let's take a look at him. That's what, about the six fish? And yeah, in about 20 minutes. About 20, 30 minutes? Yeah, look at that. Nice. That's nice fish. bass. That is a beautiful bass. It is. Look at that. Now, what do you think? We're not weighing these, so what do you think? Uh, where's he at? He's less than a million. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good four and a half pound fish. Yeah, good fish. Yeah. Of course, for TV purposes, it's seven. Seven, it's, yeah. It's actually about four. <laughs> 10-5? 10 That fish is 10-5. That fish is 10-5. Take a look at it, Colby. Oh, that is a nice fish. Beautiful. And her... Uh... <laughs> nice one. Like Mateos is all about. <laughs> oh, good, good light now. Look at the look size at of now. that. 10-pounder. That's the horse of the week right there, baby. Well, Kathy, here we are. Are you ready to catch a fish? I sure am ready. All right, let's get it. Kathy loves oh, the fish as well as I do, and she latched nice onto a really nice bass. Oh, it's a good Everybody one. Everybody having fun because the fish Ooh, were really good biting. Fish. Good. Keep the keep your line tight. Keep in the water. Keep them tight. That's it. He's going to get there with the net. Or he can, might be able to lift it. That's a good fish. Wow. Bring it up this way. Bring it up this way. All right, girl. Yes. Finally, what do you think of that? A big one. Yay. <laughs> Great. <Nice fish. laughs> good job. Good job. Boy, that's a good What do you think? Six pounds. All that good casting. Pull it out here to me. Nice fish. Good going. That's a good one. That is good. Good fish. First big bass. Put a little close right. to you. I'll push it straight toward me and turn it, turn it, turn it. There you go. Push it straight out. <laughs> Push it out. Push it way out there as far as you can. There you go. That was one of our last fish for the night right here. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, nice. Decent. Respectable. As uh, JC calls them, respectable fish. That's a respectable fish. Eh, not a big one, but he's a nice fish. Nice Tell you right what, he's probably... Yes, sir. Uh -huh. This is beautiful mountain country. The lake is ringed by the Sierra Madres of the treasure of the Sierra Madres fame. But while you're fish, you'll never be far away from the beauty of the local surrounding. Our guys, Juanito Flores and Grego, among others, were very helpful and very knowledgeable about where to fish. Not all spoke English, but we all spoke the universal language of catching bass, using hands, and my broken Spanish to break the ice if nothing else worked, and I learned a lot on this trip. Hey, this is the great staff that took care of us this whole week. Uh, the, the cooks, the folks who clean our rooms and everything else, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Paola. Evelyn. And this is Evelyn. Edgar. Guillermo. Magali. Silvia. And hey, this here is the prettiest little girl in the county, right here. We had an awful lot of fun with this little baby. Her could count to ten. Uno. Uno. Dos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
If you've never been to Mexico, folks, you need to consider going. Beautiful rivers and lakes, friendly people, fantastic food, and some of the best bass fishing you'll ever find. Mexico, one of the best kept secrets of North America. Hi, I'm Dave Barth with your shooting tip of the week. Today we're going to talk about shooting safely and keeping your barrels free of obstructions. The first example we have is a Ruger Red Hawk 44 Magnum. A bullet had been lodged in the barrel and a hot round fired after it, causing an explosion of the barrel. Had this piece come off, it would have seriously injured the shooter. Next we have examples of shotgun barrels that had an obstruction in the barrel. The first one is a Mossberg 20 gauge. It had mud in the barrel. The next three are examples of barrels that had snow in the barrel. And the center one here is a Winchester. It had a catastrophic explosion of the muzzle. Next is a Remington barrel. And the uh, explosion was so great it ruptured the choke. The last barrel is a uh, Remington barrel. The choke was stuck in the barrel due to lack of maintenance. Pull that choke a couple times a year and oil it. We have a L.C. Smith, a nice old American made shotgun. It is a Damascus barrel shotgun and not safe to shoot with modern ammunition. If you're not sure, take your firearm to a local gunsmith, have him check it out and make sure it's safe to shoot. I'm Dave Barth with your shooting tip of the week. Adventure Sports Outdoors brought to you in part by Wildlife Prairie State Park, Peoria, Illinois, a 2,000 acre park with over 150 animals. The Embassy Suites Hotel, located on the Illinois side of downtown Peoria. Watkins Marine, home of Tracker Boats and Mercury Outboards in Pekin, Illinois. Gallagher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's riverfront, open at 11 a.m. daily. And Tremont Oil Company, for all types of vehicle maintenance in Tremont, Illinois. Our thanks to these sponsors. <laughs>